like this Clippers run where you go back to the lockout season and then they have this resurgence in Lob City 2012. They get killed by the Spurs in the in that playoffs. The next year they get upset by Memphis. 2014 was a tough one because that was the year it seemed like they had a chance to win the title and they choke against OKC. They lose mm -hmm. that series. The year after they have Houston, that, that game's done. That series is done. They completely choke. It's one of the worst choke jobs, not just of the century, but probably in the history of the NBA. They end up losing to Houston in seven. Next four years, throw it away. 2021 and, or 2020 in the bubble, they have the 3-1 lead against Denver. They blow it, right? They, they just like impossible. That Denver team was like, just couldn't have been younger and less ready to do something like that. And then 2021, it flips, right? They beat Dallas. They have that iconic Kawhi game. It's like, here we go. They're playing Utah. I was at the game when he heard his ACL. They're about to go up 3-1. They look great. They look, I would have picked them to win the title right there. Kawhi gets hurt. He's out. They end up losing to uh, Phoenix in the next round. I think they were better than Phoenix. Um, 2022 throw it away. And now we're here again. This is a pretty, this is, we're talking three presidential terms now <laughs> of just kind of up and down, up and down, up and down, along with one of the great what ifs ever. What if Kawhi just decides to go to the Lakers and then they keep Shea and they keep all their picks and you just kind of wait for the next guy. Might've been a better situation. We're in year four of the Paul. They, there's so much pressure on them to deliver this year. I would say they have the most pressure in the league to, to come through. If you go through all the teams, like Milwaukee's already won. Boston, they made the finals. They're young, like they can get back. Philly, I guess just making the finals is their pressure. But the Clippers, out of anybody, I feel like that's the one where it's like, there, our window's kind of closing. We gave up all these assets. Shea is like one of the best 13, 14 guys in the league now. On top of all the picks we gave up, who knows if Kawhi is ever going to be this healthy again? Like it, it kind of has to happen this year, right? Yes. And I mean, these guys are under contract for a couple more years. I, I just think that Kawhi is 31. He's three years younger than KD. And we look at KD as, I mean, just look at the trade haul that he got from Phoenix. He's still obviously revered around the NBA as this you get him on your team and you can win the title. And some major, I, major miles on Kawhi though, even more, and not that KD sure. doesn't have major miles, but Kawhi's had two, absolutely basically missed two plus seasons just with two different injuries. Yeah. I mean, again, I see the skepticism and I totally see the concern and I'm not going to sit here and say that there's no pressure on them. Obviously there is, there's a ton of pressure. There's, I mean, if you're a bomber and you're paying a nine figure luxury tax for this team, right? you're expecting to go to the finals. At least you're expecting a deep playoff run. You should be expecting the championship based on the talent, the, the, the veteran savvy, the experience on this team. I just think they're perfectly built for the postseason, And it's really weird when you look at their regular season profile and you say, Oh, this team's a championship contender when their net rating is the same as the Washington Wizards. Their offensive rating is worse than the Los Angeles Lakers. Like, that just doesn't scream championship contender, but they're just kind of singular in the fact that they have this guy who does not play six games in a row. He probably won't for the rest of the season. And when he's on the court, they're a juggernaut. And I, I don't know how you kind of splice these You can't these dismiss things. it. Yeah. You can't dismiss it. On the other hand, like I want stretches during the season that at least show me over a sustained three week stretch, you were good. Like Milwaukee mm -hmm. just ripped off 10 in a row, right? And, and and maybe 11 tonight, but after we tape this, the Clippers are 10 and six in their last 16. In their last 35, they're 18 and 17. But they just haven't, they haven't laid the smack down. Even Philly did it. Philly went on that West Coast trip. Mm hmm. And they laid the smack down, you know, and they, they were just really good for a few games in a row. And I think you have to show that at, at some point in the season. The reason I think it's an important thing to bring up after the all-star break, they're kind of set up to do that, you know? And, and I think I want to see from them, can you just be good for two and a half weeks in a row, right? Can you go nine and one? Can you go 11 and two? Can you just have a run that makes me want to take you seriously? Because otherwise that the history just isn't that great. You kind of have to, Kind of have to throw it around once during this season. My teams, the the Celtics, I feel like they've at least, even though they've had so few time with their best guys together, 
they've at least had these stretches where I'm like, all right, this team, this is, this is a really good team when we get everybody back. You know, I know that the Philly fans, we talked to Chris Ryan about this before, like this Philly team has been really good for a long stretch. The, the question for them is more like, all right, what happens if things unravel during a game? You know, what, ha- what happens if it's game five and all of a sudden we go cold for a quarter and just every, everything gets weird. But the Clippers, we know that their ceiling is as good as just about anybody. I was going to be, th- this is the X factor. It really is. Uh, I was in the Nets locker room last night after uh, their their win against the Heat. Mikael Bridges goes for 45, just looks incredible. Yeah. And I was just joking around. I was saying like, hey, you guys could, I was just talking to some people with the team, like, hey, you guys could be the sixth seed, face Philly in the first round. You go up 2-1 and that, everyone in Philadelphia melts down. Who knows what could happen with <laughs> <Right>. you guys? <laughs> right. And they would be like totally unafraid, mm-hmm. you know, and... And they have the best 13th man in the league in Ben Simmons. So if if a bunch of people foul out, he can come in and maybe play in, in the third OT. 